One, two, three. Okay, I think this mic's on. I think everything is working fine. Uh, no, it isn't. <sighs> the microphone levels are still too. Okay, good. Yeah, so um, I could um, I could have had a script for this, but I don't. So I'm just gonna talk randomly. While I talk randomly, I'll put on something in the background, possibly. Um, you might hear a lot of noise in the background anyway, but such is things as they are. Um, this is an update. If you were wondering why I don't do um, any videos anymore, it's simple. I don't have a working video capture set up. If you wonder why I don't get a working video capture set up, it's expensive and I don't want to spend the money right now. Um, if you wonder why I don't um, fix that, well, eh, black. Uh, I'm going to build a video capture setup soon anyway because I'm gonna. Well, I don't know if soon, but probably sometime this year. Uh, because I wanna be editing videos and pictures and audios and whatever on a more professional level. Um, I already edit audio, but to edit video, I need um, better equipment. Um, anyhow. I actually recorded a lot of stuff of me just ranting and I'd, I'd like to step aside totally from myself a bit and talk about humanity and progression. I think um, generally speaking we live in probably the best time ever to live because we have one thing that previous generations didn't have which is easy access to information. And yes there is a problem of disinformation where there is a lot of um, false stuff, a lot of errors a lot of and there are a lot of ways where you can sort of get trapped I guess in a way where you have a false view of reality and you, instead of overcoming it you instead reinforce it but um, on the other hand there are many there are not only many books that you can read there are audio books that you can listen to there are videos you can watch there are articles you can read, there are ebooks you can read there's so much information that you can get which not only would help you to get accustomed to reading, but probably more importantly, get accustomed to writing and expressing yourself. Uh, I don't really want to um, rush anybody to do so. I don't think that anybody should be worried about really expressing themselves until they reach um, maybe their 40s. And I know you're saying, what, 40? That's old. Um, yeah, but never mind the fact that there are a lot of young people writing books and stuff like that even people as young as nine years old or something like that writing books that's not the point your social environment which you cannot change especially when you're very young say like the same nine year old fifteen year old whatever um, your social environment has a great impact on you and oftentimes you can't choose really your school your home your friends and so if you happen to be out of synchronization with them, if you have, want to express concepts which are not accepted by your micro society or the people you directly interact with, then you're going to have problems. And um, so that's why I say you shouldn't worry about it until you're in your 40s because it may take at least until then for you to happen to arrive into a position where you actually have the personal space you need. If you want to generate personal space earlier, I mean, obviously everybody wants to. There are a lot of, um, if you really think about it, the more personal space you have, the more power you have over your own reality. Um, the most effective way would probably be um, something like Sphala Yoga, Qigong, meditation practice, or something like that. Unfortunately, um, other than Tara Stell's yoga videos, there isn't really anything to link to directly and I haven't actually been able to ever follow a Tara Stell's yoga video fully because they're so fast and um, yeah that's how it is, they're, they're just fast, even the beginners ones are fast it takes some um, significant effort to follow them it would be nice though because um, it looks really nice and that sort of flowing style is good so um, I guess it's something I would purpose to do, but there have been other things I've been doing to develop personally. Um, I go to a gym where the instructor teaches with a mindfulness view um, in terms of documentaries and so on. There is one nice one on called the Kundalini Awakening Process, which is 
doesn't seem to have um, any major or even minor disinformation offhand. Um, so I'll probably link to that one. Most of the videos I've written, I've not written, I've watched. I say written because I actually write summaries of them for my own benefit. But um, most of the videos that I've watched have um, major disinformation or at least some minor different twist at the end or something like that which causes a problem or which could cause a problem. Because I know about it already, about the general disinformation trend and whatnot, it doesn't cause a major problem to me but I suppose if I would watch it over and over it might cause a problem because I'd forget what's true from what's false or I'd get upset at falsehoods or something like that. But I just look at things, with, try to look at things more non-judgmentally in terms of if it's going to be a benefit. So yes, I look at things and I analyze and I discriminate. But I don't judge in the sense of saying, well, this person is the worst person ever for putting this on YouTube. If something is really silly or something, sometimes may actually leave a comment saying, well, this is silly and this is why. But I still think that even the silly things are beneficial for you to be exposed to because um, it's food for thought in a way. Um, it lets you realize that there's a better way of doing things. But having said that there's a better way of doing things, I've been wondering why is anybody doing any videos about them. So I've been studying maybe I should. But then I realized I don't have the budget for it. So I'm sort of in a quandary. Um, doing a very effective video is very difficult. As you can tell, it's very easy to sit down and just talk randomly. But it's very difficult to actually talk in a way that people can understand what you're saying and gain benefit from it. It might take a whole month to produce just one 10 minute video. And that's if you have a background in marketing and you're already adept at that type of thing. Um, as for me, I may be a very quick study, but um, that's actually a misunderstanding. I'm not so much a quick study as I am a deep study. I understand things on a deep level and because so many things are similar on a deep level, it's easier for me to recognize things on a deep level and thus adapt my education to new circumstances. Um, but I have met people who are actually quick studies and there are some people who are both quick and deep studies. I need more quickening um, when it comes to my studying and when it comes to my um, adaptation to situations I think. Um, so that's one of the things I will probably be working on. Um, yeah. So anyway, I actually just wanted to talk in general though, not about myself, but about um, society and how things are going. To me, there seems to be a sort of like, the disinformation is sort of causing various problems. Firstly, it's stopping people from creating wealth. And wealth is basically anything that you can trade for something which you value more than what you created. Um, that's not a, a, a good idea. Wealth is investing wealth is investing time and effort in creating something which is of benefit to you. And sometimes this thing that you've created can be traded for something valuable to you. And sometimes this thing can be duplicated or remanufactured so that it benefits more than one person. One to many creation and distribution of wealth is the key to prosperity in the current and the evolving um, financial order. If you're doing any one-to-one -one exchange where you are basically employed by somebody else, you're investing your time for a salary, then there's always going to be a risk to zero with that. If not your direct boss, somebody somewhere is trying to eliminate your job altogether and there are pressures both direct and indirect trying to reduce your salary rather than to increase it. Meanwhile, the cost of housing, the cost of education, the cost of raising children, um, the cost of owning a vehicle, all of those things are going up and going up very quickly as in like multiplying rather than just raising by a few percentage points. So because of that, all of the important things that you need in order to dramatically improve your life, like improve transport or any transport, 
um, a relationship, uh, the stability necessary to raise children. All of those things are being threatened and depleted. So you can't think in terms of following tradition. There's a book written about this called Rich Dad Poor Dad. So that's probably the best book that introduces the concept. Um, I'm not saying it's the only book you should read or that you can take everything you know 100% but it has a lot of concepts which when you read them and understand them and start thinking in that way are going to be helpful for you for you of course um i am not rich yet in terms of um in terms of applying what i've just said so the closest thing is youtube where i have like videos that happen to be popular but they're not even popular because of me like trying to make them popular it just so happened that at the time that I put certain videos on YouTube there was no competition and that's why they became popular and it also happens that um, I really enjoyed myself when I was making videos earlier so that shows over and so a lot of people therefore find it valuable not only that but many people didn't really go into depth when it came to something like Persona 3. So because of that, um, it's one of the few videos that goes into any depth about anything. For some reason, well not really for some reason, it's obvious that first of all, most people look at the world superficially and secondly, those people who work, look at the world deeply, a lot of them don't talk about it. Um, even I, I don't look at video games, most video games very deeply, like even Persona 3. I didn't do a lot of the deep investigation into fusions and so on that I could have done in order to really get into that game and get the most of that game but at that time I was doing deep investigation into other things which I never talked about um but it paid off um like I, I was able to get a job and maximize my potential within certain limits um and so on due to a lot of the work that I did and I'm sure that going forward a lot of my experience because it's a deep experience will again help in things that I probably can't even predict right now but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be talking about these things while there's going on I, the things I talk about now I came across maybe 10 years ago you know something like um, like which I poured out I first read that so long ago, I think it it's more than ten years ago that I read that. So um, that's just giving you an example of how there's like a lag of information between where somebody is and what they talk about, and that uh, that isn't only in terms of like personal people, but it's also in terms of um professional people. And so even though a lot of videos and so on are being uploaded to YouTube, a lot of that information is at least. 50 years old. It may seem more modern, but say something like the fourth wave, that's from the 1920s. Okay, that's almost 100 years old. And even when he was teaching it, it was old. And I'm not saying old information doesn't have value. I mean, something like compassion is at least 2,000 years old, right? Golden rule is in the Gospels and it's in other things before the Gospels. I think it even goes back as far as Leviticus, which has to put it at like 4,000 plus years or something. But um, what I'm saying is that new, not new information necessarily, but um, a new focus is needed for every generation. I don't mean generation as in children being generated. I mean generation as in when you generate from one stage to another. So I don't want to use the word paradigm shift. I want to use the idea of generation because when you're going into new things, you're generating a new persona to fit that thing. So people who play a persona will understand what I mean. We generate personas via fusion, but um, within the games, but suppose within reality, you generate a persona according to choosing characteristics that would be appropriate to the context. And you don't even realize that you're doing it. Um, it seems to happen naturally. But, oh, excuse me, it's so weird. You can do it during your sleep. You may wake up and you just have a different perspective and your persona develops. Um, people may call a persona perso personality. Personality is a persona plus some other layers. 
and um, when you really awaken you actually have a different way of viewing things where you view the persona as uh, sublimated into something else. I can't remember the model that I used when I developed it a few years ago um, so that's one of the reasons why I'm thinking that I should really write it up formally and present it formally because I've forgotten a lot of the stuff that I know. I wrote it down in notebooks though so I can remember it from there and as I revise, as I look over some of my notebooks, sometimes I look at things and I say, oh well, you know, I have an even better model now and stuff. Um, the thing is, right, once you know something, it keeps acting on the subconscious level, but it would be better for you to connect your conscious and subconscious minds together. I'm laughing as I say that because I really don't do that. Um, and it would save me a lot of pain and heartache if I actually did that earlier. But um, you can't go back in the past, so going forward, um, that's basically what I'm looking to do. Anyway, any, everybody will benefit from everything. This has been a totally pointless video in a way, um, but you know, eh, whatever. Later.